Hi YouTubers, welcome back. Uh, my name is Evan Tate. Um, today's topic is part two of um, uh, my Ambersham video. I recently did a video on Ambersham talking about the one note theory. And today I wanted to uh, just expand a little bit more about, um, uh, about this subject of Ambersham. Um, and possibly if you already, if you've seen the other video about the part, part one, please click on the link, you know, and check the video out, maybe before watch, watching this one. But uh, if you haven't seen it, you want to watch this one anyway, go ahead, you can go, so you always go back to that video. Um, also, there's a free download with that video, a uh, little e-booklet, I have to say, it's about, what, 14, 15 pages uh, describing, you know, um, the uh, one note theory as far as coin the umbershot but basically it comes down to being being able to play the whole range of the saxophone without having to change your umbershot once not for anything not for the low notes no dropping of the jaw not for the high notes no pinching in the throat or anything like that all that's totally not necessary to do so um, and you can actually you know be able to get any note you want out of your saxophone um, you know, uh, first of all, you have to be able to hear the note before you play it, you know. Uh, this is something that uh, Joel had talked talk to me about when he had learned from uh, famous conductor Arturo Toscanini as uh, he was playing with the um, NBC Radio Orchestra uh, at that time. And, uh, and we always, um, and also Sigurd Rascher talked about this in his Top Tones uh, book, about hearing the next tone before you're playing it. And of course it has many, uh, uh, of course the greatest advantage of that is, you know, being able to surely hit that tone. Now, of course I mentioned before, you know, the saxophone is just a machine, you know, you should just press, you know, the keys, you know, you want the fingering you want and just put, you know, the right amount of air, you know, with your embouchure and you should get that tone what you, what you want to have. Uh, it's not always the case because we've all of us have gotten used to um, uh, manipulating, you know, the tones. I mean, I have to say myself, you know, I had a, I, I had a decent start in school, but uh, but none of the teachers who I who I had had up until the point when I started studying with Joe Allen, I had by that time um, three, maybe four different teachers, and not one of them ever talked about uh, embouchure. Uh, and Joe told me then he says, you know no need to get mad at them, stuff like that. Many people just don't have a, a concept of embouchure. They just want to put the saxophone in their mouth and play a note, and if the, if the sound comes out, that was it, you know? And uh, for, for most people, more to a science was it, you know, more science wasn't in it, you know? And um, turns out we wind up um, uh, creating very bad habits uh, while doing it that way, and by the time I got to Joe, you know, I had basically uh, was holding the saxophone much too low. I had a basically a knick, uh, you know, uh, in my neck, and so it was cutting off me part of the air supply. You know, I was you know lowering the jaw for the, for the low notes. I was pinching for the high notes. I was doing everything uh, imaginably wrong. <laughs> you know, and um, but. Um, in that first lesson with Joe, he just made, he just uh, told me uh, uh, some very basic things uh, about the approach to the embouchure, about the approach to playing, and, and which totally changed my world. Within, you know, though that, that uh, 50 minutes that I was with him for that first lesson, uh, I was more than excited to get to the next one. And of course, up to that point with my bad habits, you know, I had been playing that way to that point about maybe seven plus years before I got to Joe. And I'd say it took me about, uh, with really, with constant practice, nearly three years to get rid of all these bad habits. Three years, you know, and get rid of the bad habits of seven. And, and after that, it's just constant practice to make sure I stay in shape and things like that and make sure I, I, I um, keep my membership that way. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the thing is, and I'm more than thankful for it because I was able to, uh, I'm still able you know, to do certain things that I never dreamt of doing with the saxophone. Maybe I'll just demonstrate a couple of party tricks uh, on this video. <laughs> um, or... Um, uh, where uh, one of them is that um, 
I'll play a D major scale without, without well, a D major scale where I'm only fingering the note D. But I'll get the whole scale out. Now, it doesn't sound pretty and stuff like that, but it's possible. It's possible to play this whole scale and arpeggios, and I won't have to move my fingers at all. D major scale on D without moving any fingers. scale to that as well yeah uh, also works but as you see didn't move any fingerings it's all coming from the larynx and all um, like I said doesn't sound great it's not anything you, you want to use musically it makes me uh, makes uh, maybe a good party trick stuff like that but um but it is supposed to demonstrate how actually um, your larynx plays a, a major role in not only the production of your sound but also the control over the notes on your instrument you know um, one of the things uh, i'd like to explain is that um uh, when we are playing the saxophone um the larynx or i say the um, the vocal cords also vibrate and move while we are playing as though we were singing you know and so the same type of movements that the vocal cords make when we're singing for like one note in the octave, like la, um, when we're playing those same notes in the saxophone, is the exact same movements are being made by your vocal cords. Now, um, Joe had told me at that point he had no idea why this happened, but it was just um, anything. It does happen. We feel it. And, um, and, and honestly, I haven't actually, um, I haven't actually uh, researched it to find out why, uh, but I, it was enough to know for me, uh, for me to feel that it's happening, and I know that it's happening. And basically, so when you're singing with your horn, you are actually singing um, you know, at, the same, you know, at the same time. Your body reacts to the notes that you're playing on your saxophone. Uh, I mentioned uh, in the, uh, this, this little e-booklet, that um, I like to combine combine uh, exercises, you know, uh, when I'm playing them, you know, I don't do exercises just for intonation or, or do exercises just for tone production or do certain exercises that are only for technique. I Because when you're performing as a musician, when you're performing a piece, you have to do all these things simultaneously. And so if you want to improve your performance, why not practice that way why not practice certain elements together you know simultaneously because that's what you have to do at the end game anyway and uh, now one can argue about well if i just concentrate only on intonation i'll get better at that if only do this that. you could do that if you want I, I i say it's true but i like to look for the most economical way to get results you know and uh, I'd say that was like uh, maybe one of the most, I'd say the, one of the most uh, major things I had learned during my studies at the Manhattan School of Music in New York City with Joe Allard is uh, those, those years I spent there uh, and, and, and to getting my degree is that um, uh, I've learned how to practice. Now it may not sound like much, but for those who know, for those who know, they know how important that is. You know, it is not a little thing to, to be able to know how to practice. So, how do you form an armature? I'd say there's only really one more, one, one thing you need to know. And that would be the letter A. You know, I might have described it in, in, in the ebook right now of something else because there's different possibilities. It all depends on what language you speak. You know, when I'm teaching in German, I use the letter E because it's, it's similar to the letter A in English. You know, say A, you know, and Joe Allard, he used you know, the French word du in order to, uh, to, to um, 
uh, in order to explain it. But basically, it comes down to it. You know, even though du is a little bit different, that would be more like for clarinet, du. But, um, can argue about it. But in, um, for saxophone, if I say a, it's like say, like I'm calling my friend, hey, you know, things like that. Uh, hey, what happens, what happens when I say a? You know, when I say hey, you know? My bottom lip starts, you know, rests against my lower teeth. Hey, the corners of my mouth start moving in direction of my ears. Hey, and most importantly, my tongue raises in my mouth, you know, hey. And if I exhale, hey, where do I feel the air? Where do you feel the air? Try this now with me. Hey, hey, or to try to hiss like a cat. What happened when you do that? with your mouth in this position, where do you feel the air flow? It flows right out over your teeth, I mean, like, excuse me, over your tongue, between your teeth, coming out in front. You know, the air is not flowing underneath your tongue, it's not going into your cheeks, where you see some people playing saxophone like this, you know, things like that. Um, this is one of the most, yeah, non-economical ways to play, but what this does, this focuses all the air you're putting out of your lungs into a smaller space, you know, focused air. And so what comes down to it, when I'm doing like this, you know, when I'm playing A, you know, and I'm, then I just rest my lower lip against my bottom teeth. I say I rest them against them. I don't fold my lip underneath them. It's very important what type of terminology you're using because especially if you're trying to explain it to someone or you're writing it to someone and they say fold, oftentimes people do too much. They say fold and they put a lot of lower lip over the teeth and after they play a half an hour, their lower lip hurts and, you, and they wonder why. It's much too much. Lip, uh, the teeth wind up digging into the softer part of your lower lip, and that's not good. So when I'm saying uh, A, and then I'm playing, then and my tongue is raised in my mouth when I'm playing this. Now when I lower my tongue and say ah, ah, like apple, they say that, ah, my tongue is now lying on the bottom of my mouth. Now, you notice the difference in, in sound there. And now if I were to say, ha, ha, my tongue lying on the bottom of my mouth, ha, where do you feel the air? And basically, you, bas you barely feel it because there's no pressure behind that. There's very little pressure going. Ha, the only pressure I got is coming out of my lungs, you know? I mean, anyway, but still, there's a difference between ha and hey. I have more, con I have a more focused airstream with hey, hey, and ha. Now you notice too, there's a different in sound. Now, when it comes down to intonation, I'll just say shortly on that. Oftentimes, people are talking about intonation, and people are using, you know, tuning machines and tuning forks and stuff like this. Is all fine and good, but almost no one talks about the tongue position when it comes down to intonation on saxophone. I don't get it actually. Uh, it obviously has a lot to do with the tone production, it has a lot to do with your intonation, but no one's mentioning a word about where your tongue should be, you know, uh, for getting that optimal, um, optimal embouchure to get that optimal uh, tone and intonation. Yeah. So I just wanted to make clear a couple of things, a couple of, uh, you know, concepts about the, about the embouchure. You know, you could really play the whole, scope of the instrument, the whole, the whole, the whole scale of the instrument without ever having to change your embouchure. You know, the only thing you'll have to manipulate, you know, you know, for some cases, of course, for intonation in some place, because, you know, the, like every instrument, there are certain notes that are just n more, not as in tune as others. And um, we know if we're going to play in the altissimo range, you know, in the top tones range, you know, there you'll have to do some manipulations in order to reach these tones, but there are plenty of exercises. Um, that I'll you know that uh, I'll present in another video that'll prepare you for playing uh, the altissimo range with a lot more e with, with, with more ease and also with, with better intonation. So um, on that, I like to say please comment, subscribe, you know, ask questions, 
you know, check out um, my my Patreon page and consider uh, becoming a Patreon because um, uh, on my Patreon page, I talk not only about saxophone technique like here, I'm also, you know, uh, I also offer um, uh, you know, improv etudes, things about uh, on improvisation, improvisational techniques, some exercises on uh, which you can use in order to prove your linear playing. And I think that you can benefit from it as well. So anyway, Evan Tate here signing off. Comment, subscribe, click that notification button so that you can check out the next video I have coming up and hope to see you soon.